Um, Futrends does a you know does a really um, outstanding job. Uh, you've certainly delivered us um, the number of students we were hoping for. Right. Um, but but really the more important part for me is the quality of students. Hi guys, today I'm at RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, where I'm talking to some of the stalwarts who are sort of running the show here, trying to understand what it means to be in Rochester, be it at Rochester Institute of Technology, their alumni base, their placements, their experience. So hi Paul, hi, how are you? Nice to see you, Raghav. It's a pleasure to have you here at RIT today. Thank you so much. So Paul, it would be great if you could sort of give us a bit of introduction about what you do here. Sure. I, I, I sometimes I say I've got the greatest job in the world, uh, yeah. which is to find students from all over the planet to come mm -hmm. study here at RIT. Right. Uh, and it's also the greatest job in the world just because RIT is such a vibrant, uh, amazing place to study. I mean, there's you know over 20,000 colleges and universities in the United States, um, but I feel like uh, I'm so lucky because RIT right now it's kind of in the right place at yep. the right time. Yep. Uh, sure. Very very career focused, um, which is what we know. Um, students at all level, mm. uh, but particularly at the graduate level, yeah, are looking yeah. for right now. Yeah, and just to like make a point of this, while I was walking across the campus with you, you were just showing me like random buildings, one fifty million dollars, two hundred million dollars, massive infrastructure push. Correct, absolutely. Um, we've made major, major renovations um, in terms of brick and mortar to make sure that our um, campus is as modern as it can be. Um, mm. I would put our campus up against anybody, anybody else's. Mm. Um, with that said. Um, you can have all the flashy facilities you want. And if you don't have that uh, teaching and that expertise in the classroom and yeah. doing research, um, you know, it's really all just flash. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm so impressed um, with all of our colleges, but particularly in Saunders College of Business, just the um, level of engagement, um, the talent of the faculty, uh, very entrepreneurially focused. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll also say, uh, um, you know, I went to business school a long, long time ago. And what I found about Saunders that, that's so compelling to me is one is that spirit of entrepreneurship. Um, and the second is, is really, you know, kind of figuring out how you take tech innovation to the marketplace. Hmm. Um, if you look at a, a business student now, um, compared to when I uh, began in business school in the nineties is, uh, you know, really the challenge ahead is, um, you know, uh, innovation just for the sake of innovation doesn't help. It's how do you get that innovation um, and get it to the masses? Yeah. Um, and and um, right now, you know, Saunders has this theme of technology unlocked, um, which I mm. think is really on point for them. Um, mm. And um, they're executing the mission. That's what they're doing. Um, mm. And so, uh, you know, it's it's you know, I'm not in the sales business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, because what we offer is is very authentic. Right. Um, right. And I, I just can't say enough good things. I know today your hope is to talk. Uh, a little bit about our business analytics program, yep. um, but I can't say enough good things about all arms uh, of Saunders College of Business. They do an excellent job mm. and serve RIT very well. But RIT, right, for you, how did you choose this? Like, what what made you personally choose RIT? Sure. Um, well, it's 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 um, for me the the big thing for us is um, just kind of how forward focused we are, mm. um, and then I keep using that word, but authentic. Um, you know, what kind of ties um, most of our programs together? Um, particularly at the undergraduate level, but also at the graduate level, is our cooperative education or co-op program. Um, and you know we've been doing co-op for over a hundred years. Mm. Uh, and so we're getting um, all of our students meaningful uh, uh, professional applications while they're here as a student. Um, and that's a real game changer. And the um, the it, it, it adds value in so many ways. Uh, you know, for an international student, for a student from India, um, there's many, many students, um, especially these days, um, who can return to India and say that they've studied in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, however, having the ability to both work and study in the U.S., um, you know, it, it, it's a game changer. Um, and then there's a, a really bad joke we've been saying at RIT for many years, which is uh, when you're at RIT, when you graduate, you get two pieces of paper. You know, the first piece of paper is your diploma. You get yeah, that anywhere. Yeah. The other thing you get is you get a resume uh, filled mm -hmm. with experiences. Um, and that really gives our uh, a graduates a leg up. Um, mm. And don't believe it from me. You know, do your research. I think yeah. you'll find, you know, particularly for people um, on the subcontinent, um, just how, how, how... How is your placement so strong? Like, when we look at your placement records, 
we see a record breaking stats like what is the reason behind it um well the um gosh a lot of it it's just kind of a numbers game to be honest and i don't have data from um, other other institutions, um, but if you can believe it, you know um, the, the the people on the camera can't see this, but we're um, you know we're in this building now that has about 200 employees in it, um, and in this building we share it with our cooperative education and career services department. Um, you know we have 28 full time people working with recruiters um, and to help our students um, find jobs. Yeah, um, I, I you know I don't have data on what other schools are. Uh, and what they, they offer, but that seems very high to me. And I think the best part here, combine that with the future in US pathway with our corporate outreach. I think we are sort of doing everything possible that is f like physically possible for our candidates to get jobs. Correct, correct. And, and that's why we're so excited about the partnership. Um, Futrends does a, you know, does a really um, outstanding job. Um, a, a few things in our, um, you know, for the, for the folks watching this podcast, um, you know, we've been partnering now for, I guess it's been about six months. Yeah. Um, and uh, you've certainly delivered us um, the number of students we were hoping for. Right. Um, but, but really the more important part for me is the quality of students. Um, and, um, you know, in terms of the first batch that we yeah. brought in, um, they're very passionate. They're very involved on campus. Um, I run into them all the time. Actually, we ran into two as we were yeah. walking across campus just now. They, yeah. they really yeah. quickly said hi. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, um, so... Um, it's, it's, uh, it's been, you know, it's, it's been a good partnership for us. And, yeah. and I think, I think Futurance's model, um, is really interesting because, uh, American universities, things have kind of changed where, where companies are kind of our customer now. Yeah. Like we kind of need to know what it is that, that, that companies, both large and small, both American and multinational are looking for, yeah. Yeah. um, and really need them to. Um, let us know what their needs are so then we can adapt it into what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, and, and the other thing too that is um, a, great, um, a great colleague of mine uh, by the name of Ed Lincoln, um, he always said um, one thing that, that I think really hold, rings true uh, for RIT and that's we always strive to be better. Yeah. Um, like we literally, anytime we do something well, um, there's no pat on the back. It's instantly the, the second that mm. initiative or that event is done, it's Doesn't how matter. can we do it better next yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, in some ways it makes the work really exhausting, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a labor of love. Uh, mm. it's, it's a wonderful place to work. It's, I love but it here. How would you define the sort of a culture, the environment at RIT? Like if let's say I'm trying to come here, how, how does it like, how does it feel? Sure. Um, it's, um, uh, geez, that's a, that's a tough question. But yeah. in terms of the culture, I would say, um, we have doers, you know, we have people who are very um, engaged in their education. We have people that are very engaged in their experience and wanting to get the most out of it. Um, you know, the students that we've brought through um, on the pathway thus far, um, you know, they're not just taking business classes. Um, you know, they're getting involved in clubs. They are, um, you know, they're, they're, they're exploring the local region. Mm -hmm. um, Western New York is, is, in my opinion, one of the best kept secrets in the United <laughs> States. Um, you know, I'm, not, I'm out on the road a lot. Actually, I, I leave for Indonesia uh, in a matter of hours here. Wow. Um, and, um, you know, wherever, whenever I'm on the road and I'm engaging with, with partners or students or families, they always say, uh, where are you? And, and I always say, oh, we're in New York. And they go, oh, New York City, New York City. And it's like, no, 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 we're on the... We're actually much closer to Toronto than New York City, yeah. um, and I'm a New Yorker. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I'm, you know, I've spent uh, a significant portion of my life in New York City, um, but it's a really well kept secret. It's gorgeous up here. Um, there's a lot Beautiful. of wonderful things to do in the outdoors, especially this time of year with the colors changing um, in October. Um, there's great hiking. The Finger Lakes. Um, we're what's called in the Finger Lakes region hmm. uh, because there's six lakes, um, and when you look at them, they look like fingers. Yeah. Um, hmm. But there's six of them, so they they didn't quite get the name right. Hmm. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, like I said, it's a really uh, um, I found uh, um, an underappreciated uh, section of the, uh, of the United States. So it, it's still a little bit of a secret now. Yeah. After this podcast, it probably won't be. <laughs> now, now let's talk about the Masters in Business mm -hmm. Analytics as, as a program. Mm -hmm. How did that thought come up uh, at the department level? And why do you think business analytics is so much in demand? Um, I, I, well, for starters, it's excellent faculty. Um, and, and I've gotten to know the department very, very well. Um, you know, I can't say um, enough good things about uh, uh, Manlu Lu, who oversees the department. Um, and, uh, um, you know, it is talented faculty. Um, it's a really excellent curriculum. Um, so I would start there. Um, the next piece of it is um, 
you know, if like, let's say, I, I don't know where to put that fly to the time machine to. So go back 10 or 15 years. And if I, you know, if I simply use the word analytics, um, there might very well be some, you know, kind of what, you know, what does that mean? Yeah. I'm um, now even the most, um, you know, the most, you know, anybody who who's has any interest in business, you know, has some understanding of analytics. Um, we're actually seeing it now um, kind of slowly but surely uh, creep into high schools, yeah. um, into the curriculum and, and understanding data. Um, uh, many, many years ago, um, I taught statistics. Uh, you? So I did. I did. Oh, long, long time ago. Wow. I, I couldn't do any of it now. Uh, um, <laughs> I couldn't recite any of it now. Um, but I would say, um, you know, across the globe, people are seeing that in order to succeed, um, you know, you have to, first it was, you have to understand data. Like you literally need to know the terms. Um, and that lasted us for a period. And then, you know, I can't pick a date in the calendar, but the last four or five years, um, there's, there's very few industries, um, where you, you wouldn't be challenged to succeed if you didn't understand really how to use data to interpret it, understand what it means, draw conclusions from it. And then the, the next big step is what's next. Um, and so that is, um, you know, that is uh, a, a large part um, of the bus business analytics program here at RIT. Um, another thing that I appreciate about the program um, is there's definitely a programming component, um, and um, um, and that's important. Um, and, and students need to to bring those things with them. If they don't have those, um, there are bridge courses and other ways that you can get caught up to speed. Um, but you know, from everything I'm seeing. Um, they are um, re really guiding their instruction where uh, when they leave, they're not beholden to one you know, type of software. You know, the software, if you take somebody who's you know, 25 to 30 you know, and they're getting their master's degree in business analytics, over the course of their career, regardless of what they do, the, the software program they use is going to change three, four, five, six times. And they'll, they'll have to to, to kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, upscale in those things and, and um, um, as the world makes, you know, kind of creates better software. But the other piece of the puzzle is just to, you know, kind of think analytically. Um, I've actually heard that phrase uh, from, I believe it was from Man Lu at one point, I've kind of, that I kind of latch on that, think analytically. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of value and wisdom to that. Perfect. Now, one final piece of advice you would want to give to a future in US pathway candidate who's wanting to come to Rochester, RIT? Sure, well, I think the pathway uh, via Futurance is a very valuable one. Uh, um, you know, the, the business model is such um, that there's, there's cost savings. You know, yeah. there's cost savings by taking some of the classes in India. And there's also kind of less of investment of time. Um, it's less time that you have to be over here. Um, and, um, you know, so, so, you know, that's wise. Um, and, and it's been fortunate to us because we've been able to create um, access for for more students, right, right. Uh, um, by by doing this way and having some some cost savings. Um, but my advice to them um, would be, you know, you're coming for the academics, um, but live the full experience. Mm. Um, another piece of the puzzle is, um, you know, be thinking, you know, from the moment you get on campus, be really thinking about what their professional goals are. You know, what is it you want to study? Not what you want to study, what is it you want to do professionally? And how can you get the most out of the resources here to make that happen? Um, even something as small as you know, taking every professor that you have hmm. and going through their LinkedIn page um, and seeing all the experiences they've had, Very right? Because when you, um, it's, it's very different than when I was in business school. Uh, everything is different than when I was in business school. But essentially, you know, if you look at that, if you look at their LinkedIn page, um, we have many, many uh, um, professors who, um, you know, were, were in industry for a long time. We have some who are adjuncts who are still in industry right now. So take a look at what they're doing. Um, and instead of just only asking questions on the curriculum, you know, don't be scared to say, hey, you know, you were, you know, you were at, um, uh, you know, you you were working for um, Xerox or, uh, um, you know, or um, whomever, um, you know, kind of large multinational companies, uh, um, you know, Apple, Google, whomever, um, or also kind of smaller mid-tier firms. You know, what was that experience like? Um, and, um, you know, what were the what were the what were the kind of the the pluses and what were the drawbacks? Um, you know, what you'll find is. Um, just a real wide range of experiences. Mm. Uh, you know, another beauty of, of our co-op program 
is it, it gives students kind of a small tryout, um, you know, not only of a company, Mm -hmm. um, but also of, you know, do I want to work in a uh, large firm? Do I want to work in a small firm? Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, geographically, where do I want to be? Um, uh, you know, the, the students watching this podcast, they've probably done their research and they mm -hmm. know just how good we are at getting OPT for our students. Um, um, our success rate is incredibly, incredibly high. Um, you know, certainly no school can guarantee it. Um, however, um, if you look at our success rate, it's, it's phenomenally high. high. And, and I'd be nervous of people who can who, who say they can guarantee it because they can't. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But particularly for students from the subcontinent. Perfect. I think this was super helpful, Paul. One one final thing. Mm -hmm. Final thing. What are some fun things to do at Rochester? Oh gosh, where do I start? Uh, I talked about the outdoors yeah. um, uh, already. Um, one of the ones that that people will m might think I'm crazy, particularly if they're 26 or 27, is um, we have this really amazing museum called the Strong Museum of Play. Oh, um, play. In it, in in it, we have the Toy Hall of Fame, and we have. Um, um, it's essentially the Video Game Hall of Fame. Wow. Um, the, the Video Game Hall of Fame isn't the exact title, but it's showing um, all the history of, of video games. Wow. Uh, um, and so a lot of times we'll have families visiting and they'll have a few hours to kill before their flight. Um, and they'll always say, what should I do? And I'll say, oh, go to the, you know, go to the Strong Museum of Play, you know, go to the Toy Hall of Fame. And they'll look at me like, okay, you know, my, <laughs> my, my child's, you know, my, they're, they're, you know, my child is, isn't, you know, 12 anymore. And they yeah. go there. It's, it's more for adults than kids. They have yeah. the old arcade games from back in the 1980s and all those things. Um, but we always say you can eat your way through Rochester. Um, the amount of um, excellent places to dine is is off the charts. Um, I'm a foodie, and I still I've I've been here for over four years, and I still haven't gotten to all the places I want to. Um, I should mention that we have some uh, enterprising um, restaurant tours here in in Rochester, and we actually have um, five Indian restaurants with a short five. Uh, um, cause we have, you know, we have a very wow. strong footprint in the Indian community here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was reading about that, that you have been in India, like the presence in India has been from 1970s. Correct. Correct. So what's we, that about? Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, um, Indian culture is part of our DNA. Um, you know, where we, um, I'm, I'm over there all the time. Uh, um, yeah. I absolutely love it. Um, we do a lot of meetups there. We do, um, several events for students who are thinking about us. We have events for students who are, um, you know, going to be joining us. Um, actually, I was just on a call this morning. Mm. Um, I mean, we have a very, you know, most of our students come at the, um, at the fall intake, but we're, we're hosting an event for those coming at the January intake, mm. just so they feel like they, um, you know, they kind of meet a representative of RIT and they feel like they're, they're getting started on the right foot. Yeah. Um, we have a few dozen Indians on faculty. Um, and, uh, you know, it's very authentic for us. It goes, mm. it goes way, way back. Um, like, like you said, all the way to the seventies. Yeah. Um, we have a, we have a Hindu chaplain, um, you know, I, I, I could go on and on, well, uh, um, but, uh, it's uh, something that we're very proud of. I think our whole community, our whole candidates are super, super excited for RIT. Thank you so much for this conversation and trust us in fall top quality future and U.S. pathway candidates are going to be here at RIT. Perfect. Thank you, Raghu. It's a pleasure. You. Appreciate it. Take Thank care. You.